demonstration of how to give um, blood products. Um, this is how you would do it if you were a med surge nurse. Um, you would first get an order from your physician to administer blood. You'd make sure the doctor gave risk and benefits to the patient. You would have a consent sign. The consent would be good for the entire admission. Uh, once the consent was signed, you would give information to the patient of possible reactions that could happen and for them to uh, notify you if they had any of these reactions. <clears throat> After the blood is typed and crossed, the uh, lab will call you to come down and uh, get your unit of blood. It will be in a bag similar to this. It will have a paper on the back that will have your unit number, patient name, birth date, medical record number, account number, uh, blood type, expiration date, and time. Uh, you would also be given a, a sheet that would be checked off with another RN that would show a list of vital signs that you would have to take pre-transfusion uh, every five minutes for the first 20 minutes and then hourly until the transfusion was completed. <clears throat> so you would first make sure your patient had uh, at least an 18, 20 gauge in their arm that would be compatible with getting blood. Uh, you'd make sure their temperature was no, uh, not over 100. If it was, you'd need to contact the physician before you start giving blood. Two RNs would go into the room. One would have the bag of blood with this paper. The other would have the uh, vital signs record and would stand by the patient. You would verify the patient uh, by asking them their name and birthday. You would look at their ID bracelet on their wrist, make sure those matched, and then you would go through each items uh, that are on there, which include the medical record. date and time and you would compare those to each one of those sheets. Once two RNs check that off, uh, the other RN would sign the paper that she uh, checked that off with you. From the time you first pick up your blood, you have 30 minutes before transfusion. Um, it must be started within 30 minutes from the time you leave blood bank. You would uh, get a bag of normal saline would need to be in the room along with a uh, primary IV kit. That bag would need to be ready in case uh, your patient had any type of transfusion reaction. <clears throat> the blood tubing would actually be received when you picked up your blood and it is going to have two spikes filter and then the rest of the blood tubing is going to be similar to uh, your primary set that you use for IVs. This blood also has a connector in between the blood and the IV tubing that is called a leukocyte filter. Uh, it is used when patients have had transfusion reactions in the past and it basically pulls out the white blood cells from the blood to help reduce uh, any reactions uh, the patient might have. Once the blood is hung, the filter would have to be lifted while the blood ran into it. Once blood has come all the way through this part and into the tubing, this part would have to be lifted. And you would have to wait until blood was three-fourths way up before you put it back down to allow the rest of the blood to go through and then the rest of the priming you would have to hold your arrow up just like you would if you were priming normal saline get it to the end of your tubing you would insert this part in to your pump just like you would uh, starting an IV which once the blood is completely primed and ready to put into the patient, you would then take your normal saline and you 
you would connect the normal saline into the patient's IV. You would take your blood in an alligator clip and you would connect the blood to the first port closest to the patient. Your saline would be clamped off and only used if the patient had a reaction and your blood would actually be monitored through your pump. You would start off by uh, with the patient getting 50 cc's or mls per hour and they would get the 50 cc's the first 20 minutes that you're in there um, with the patient monitoring them and their vital signs. After 20 minutes is up, if the patient hasn't had any reactions, you can up your blood to 150 is the most you can run your blood. Uh, of course, if they have any kind of uh, renal or cardiac impairment, such as kidney failure, CHF, you would probably want to run your blood a little bit slower, slower and you would really want to monitor their lungs closely to make sure they didn't have any kind of fluid overload. If you notice them with shortness of breath, crackles in their lungs, um, you would stop the infusion and talk to the doctor about possibly getting something for them uh, to help with that fluid overload. Other than that, once your 20 minutes is up, in that 20 minutes you're going to check their vital signs once every five minutes for a total of four times. After that, you only have to monitor their vital signs once an hour until the transfusion is completed. Um, if they have any signs or symptoms, uh, they're to let you know and just make sure you constantly ask them. Also, uh, if they feel their IV is giving them any trouble or they notice any swelling at the site, uh, tell them to notify you immediately. Uh, once blood is complete, if they have another unit of blood, go through the entire same process as you did with the first unit of the blood, uh, even checking off with two nurses, the vital signs, everything is completely the same. Uh, and you have to wait 30 minutes in between units of blood. Uh, you have four hours to get the blood in and 30 minutes to start giving the blood from the time you leave the blood bank. And once your blood has been given, take what's called a pigtail that's attached to your blood, pull that off, and you send down your vital sign sheet to lab so they can keep a record of what was actually given to the patient. Uh, blood, the empty blood bag and tubing all needs to be disposed in a red biohazard bag.